Hello there. My name is Dr. Ocean. It is so lovely to finally meet you in person. I know we have been discussing this for a while over email, so it is so nice to put a face to a name. You're very beautiful. Oh, you're welcome. So, we are going to be doing a consult today for your breast augmentation procedure. Now, you said that you were still a little bit unsure about things, which is completely fine. It is a big decision to make. So, we'll just talk a little bit about your options, the process. We'll also take a look at your frame and see which size implant would be best for you. And we can go from there and you can take time to think on it before you make any big decisions, okay? Of course, this is, you know, a very important um, consult to have because we will talk about, like I said, your options, but it's also important to remember the risks, like with any procedure, okay? So, definitely take your time thinking on things, and if you have any questions today or in the following days, feel free to, again, email me. I don't mind replying. Give a call to the clinic, or if you want to book a second appointment because you have more questions, we can do that as well, okay? Of course, it's no problem at all. It's exactly what I'm here for, to make you feel the most comfortable as possible, okay? So, let's just talk a little bit about you, your health, your lifestyle habits, etc. Okay? Before we get into the details on the implants themselves. Okay. So, have you had any procedures before? Whether that be a surgery that, you know, might have needed to happen for health reasons or a surgery that was cosmetically wanted. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's the only real medical one that was of a concern. And then you did say you've had some cosmetic surgeries. Which ones were those? Oh, okay. So that procedure. Well, I mean, they did a really nice job. Looks really nice. Very natural. Yeah. And how was your experience with that? I mean, you didn't do that here at this clinic. Did you go overseas or did you stay in Canada? Okay. Good. Well, I'm glad you had a positive experience. And I mean, it looks amazing. How was your healing with that one? Did you find that... There were any complications? Did you heal relatively well? What was your pain tolerance like? Okay. Good to know. So they put you on antibiotics then? Okay. And then, what other procedures have you had? And so that was just a smaller eye lift then. Nothing too serious from what I'm looking at. Just slightly, okay? Definitely, okay. I see. Now, since you have had some procedures on the face, that's completely fine. Um, you've probably know the routine of going through the consultations, the healing time, etc., which is all really great. Um, have you had any procedures on the body, though? Okay. So you did want to get the, um, the BBL, but you didn't go through with it? Okay, why is that? Did you do the consults and everything? Okay. Fair enough. Just curious if there was something more to it or if it was just you changed your mind. Okay. 
So then no other body procedures. Okay, so this one would be your first, and I mean, I think that you've picked a great clinic to go with if I do say so myself. I have been doing cosmetic procedures for almost 10 years now. Thank you, skincare. <laughs> and, um, I mean, I absolutely love it. I especially love doing um, the breast augmentation, you know, I think it really changes people's confidence about themselves and I love making people happy. Not that anyone needs any of these procedures by any means, but it is their own choice and I love seeing people so happy after it's all completed and they're all fully healed. It really can, it really can change um, a person's confidence, you know, and if that's what makes them happy, to each their own. I mean, you are so beautiful already, but if this is going to make you feel even more beautiful, then I would be more than happy to be a part of this entire process with you. And I know you said you did a few consults for the BBL and still were unsure about it, so we can do a few consults and any questions we can go over again and again to make sure you feel the most comfortable, okay? It's my job. Now, do you have any allergies to medication? Any allergies in general? Okay. Have you had any bad experience with any medications in the past? Any painkillers when you did these other procedures? No? Okay. Perfect. Now, I also just wanted to talk a little bit with you about your lifestyle habits. Because sometimes breast augmentation isn't for everyone due to their um, routines and fitness habits, especially for people who do high impact sports because they're more likely to rupture. People who do a lot of running, you know, that extra weight that you carry on your chest now can cause back pain and make it more uncomfortable when you run. Um, Sometimes people who do a lot of surfing and they are down on their chest a lot and that pressure again can increase your chance of rupture So I just wanted to talk a little bit with you about your lifestyle habits just to make sure that we go over all the options and You know really make sure that this is a decision that's going to be right for you Okay Okay Pilates is great. I do love yeah, yoga. Okay, these are good low impact um, workouts. Not to say that you can't do high impact ones, it's just if you are someone who is going on long runs every day, breast augmentation, it can be more of, there can just be more complications and more discomfort for those people sometimes. So just want to bring that to their attention. Okay, and to be reaching out to your doctor. Can I just have their first and last name, please? Oh, is that, um, Bon Maple? Yeah. Oh, they're wonderful. I've actually had a few, um, clients come in and they have that same family doctor, so. Yeah, I've heard great things. That's amazing. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And then I'll little marketing question. How did you hear about our clinic? Oh. Yeah, our um, TikTok marketing uh, manager has been doing really good. I'll let her know. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes, that was a funny one. I think that one got over like 100,000 views or something. Yeah. Comes up with some great stuff. Power, power of social media, I tell you. I'm not too big on it, but, um, money well spent there hiring her. <laughs> okay. So, let's now go through some options, okay? Now, based on what we've discussed over email and just your lifestyle,
lifestyle habits, I think that the best option for you is going to be a silicone implant. Now, I have a few pamphlets that we can go through as well. Um, this one's a guide to breast augmentation. This is also 10 things you should know about life with breast implants, so we'll go through that together. Also give you this copy to take home with you. It's a lot of information coming at you at once today, so if at any point you need a break, um, let me know. But because there's so much info, I want to make sure you have the pamphlets at home as well to review anything. No problem. Okay, so here is um, an example of a silicone implant. Okay, so this is a silicone shell and it is filled with silicone. Now the alternative is a saline breast implant. Now those have a silicone shell and are filled with saline. So the difference basically, saline implants are can get them at a younger age. Now, for you, that's not really um, a concern because you are old enough to get either one. Um, so you do have to wait a bit longer to get the silicone, but that's not a problem for you. Now, the saline have, um, they are filled after we do the incision, okay? So they get put in empty. We do the incision, we put it in, and then we fill it up with the sterile saline water. Now, the saline ones have a positive, you know, they are, there are pros and cons to each. The saline are less expensive, which is always great, especially if you are on a budget. However, though, they don't feel as real as the silicone, okay? The saline ones are a bit more hard. Um, and because you fill them after incision, sometimes they can just, they just don't fill out as naturally as the silicone, okay? Don't get me wrong, of course we do our best and both look great, but the saline just doesn't feel as natural as a silicone implant, okay? But they are less expensive. Another thing is that there are risks to both, you know, if one ruptures, something like that. Now, the saline, there is some mixed research on it, but it can be considered more safe if it ruptures because it is salt water and most of that gets absorbed into the body. Whereas with the silicone, if it ruptures, there are some more serious health risks, but that's only if it ruptures, okay? Now, for you, just based on what we've talked about, I would recommend the silicone over the saline because you want something that is a bit more natural, feels natural, and even with your other cosmetic procedures that you've had done with your nose and your eye lift, those all look very natural. I mean, your nose, they did an incredible job. They really did. So because of that, you know, even with the proportions of your face, and you haven't had any lip filler done, no, so I can tell that you're just, you know, enhancing your features, and you want to enhance the chest area, that's why I think the silicone is better, okay? It's going to feel more natural. Um, it is a bit more expensive, though, because of that, okay? But as I mentioned, this is what a silicone implant looks like. We've got the shell and the inside. Just a few fluffies on it. Don't worry, this is just a sample. The one that we actually use for you will be completely sterile, comes out of like a styrofoam box and everything, iodine, all of that good stuff, okay? Um, mm -hmm. So the entire um, procedure itself takes about an hour. I mean, it does not take long at all. It really doesn't, especially because we've been doing this for so many years. I mean, our clinic is, as you know, really known for breast augmentation. Yes, so it is our bread and butter. Okay, so this is a uh, medium size. This is a 405 gram. You can feel how heavy that one is if you'd like. Mm -hmm. So take into consideration you may think, oh, that's not too heavy, but once it's on your body, you 
you will have that weight and you have to remember you're not used to that type of weight and neither is your back, okay? Now I know that you want it to be noticeable because it, obviously if you're getting the implants you want it to be visible though not overdone but just take into consideration the different weight and how that's going to feel, okay? Now this is a much larger implant, okay? This one is a 755, okay? So this one is almost double the last. You can see it is quite large. Now this just would not make sense for your frame. Far too large. However, I wanted to just show you, just so you can see how natural it looks, how natural it feels. I mean, these are often referred to as like the gummy bear implants because of their jelly natural um, feeling that they have. The saline can sometimes almost leave like a ripple effect on the breast. You know, we do a pretty good job, but sometimes that can happen just because it is filled after we insert. Whereas the silicone, it's just one whole item that we put in, okay? Yeah, very fun, but quite large and very heavy, especially when there's two of them. Now, I mean, we will take a better look at your frame. I'll have you remove your blouse, please, and we'll do some measurements. But just, I mean, right off the bat, I think that this is a better size for you, okay? It's much smaller, it's much lighter. This is a 295cc, okay? Um, you can just feel how soft and natural that is. It's very nice and not too big, okay? So, these would be both of them. And considering you don't have much right now, this would be a big change, but it would still feel natural and it would look very good on your frame as opposed to going with the medium, okay? This one would be quite larger, and the circumference of it doesn't make sense given your frame. So I think that this would be a better size for you. You can feel those, and you can feel the weight. I mean, they're also much lighter than the other ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, very natural. Yeah, so I mean, you are of age for both of them. It's completely fine. Um, the silicone, you have to be 22. And the uh, saline, you have to be 18, but you're fine for both of those. I know I'm making a little snowman of breast implants here. Okay, we'll place those down if they can stay. There we go. Okay, so let's look first at just this pamphlet that I want to give you. So, number one. These are the 10 things you should know about life with breast implants, okay? So, number one, your plastic surgeon is your new BFF, okay? So, any issues that you have, any questions, as I mentioned before, feel free to contact me anytime, okay? Contact the clinic, call. Any issues that you have with your implant as well, you call us first. Unless it's extremely, extremely serious, then you call the hospital. Now, of course, these are things that we more so discuss after we've made the final decision on the implants, but we've even had um, clients who will come in and their implant will be like half out because there was an issue with their incision or something. Sometimes these cases happen, very rare, but it's important to know the risks and we get them in any time of day. That one I think was a 5 a.m. call. I immediately drove into the clinic. We put the implant back in place, stitched it up, good to go, and much better within three months, okay? Sometimes cases like that can happen, but it's really important to follow all of the healing instructions, to wear your support bras, and to not do any extreme physical activity. Okay, number two, you can still get your daily dose of endorphins, okay? Um, once you're fully recovered, you can still do your exercises and um, you can still have your active lifestyle, like I said. 
And as I mentioned before, just be cautious during any activity that puts pressure on the implants. Now you do Pilates and yoga, so you should be fine. But that's why I ask those questions about people who might do high impact sports or surfing, something like that, okay? Number three, your breast appearance may change. So, the breast contains fatty tissue and may respond to changes in your body similarly to how they have responded to prior implants, okay? So, factors that affect the size and shape include weight loss, weight gain, pregnancy, etc., okay? Also, aging that will affect the gravity and the placement of the implant. Um, I just... This one's a bit more personal, but are you planning on losing or gaining, gaining any weight in the um, near future? Not really. Okay. Of course, those fluctuations are perfectly fine and normal. It's just if you had plans to gain a significant amount of weight or lose a significant amount of weight, it's always good to know that because that will affect how the implant looks and how it heals as well, okay? Number four, breast implants do not prevent women with implants from getting accurate mammograms, okay? You can still get your mammograms, always important to get that done. Number five, you may be curious about nursing with implants. Are you planning on having any kids anytime soon? No. Adoption is always a great option, yeah. Oh, right. I completely agree as well. If I were to have any kids, I think I would adopt too, so this one isn't a concern for you, at least as of right now. Number six, do self-exams to check with your breast. Has your doctor gone over how to do a breast exam, a self-breast exam? Yeah. Okay, good. Is breast cancer common within your family? No, okay. Number seven, get your breast checked regularly by a professional. So you can come into the clinic and we can do checkups. That's no problem at all. Number eight, you may develop an implant related condition. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are risks with any implants and any cosmetic procedures. I'm sure you know, you've heard your previous doctors talk about this probably more times than you care to hear, but it's important. So some things that can happen are a capsular contracture, um, occurs when the normal capsule tightens up and squeezes the implant. This can make the implant feel firmer, distort the appearance of the breast, and can be painful. Now, if you have any of those symptoms, like any pain, any unusual swelling, pus um, around the sutures, the stitches, you just call the clinic, you come in, and we take a look at everything, okay? Yes, anytime. Um, breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, a lot of words there. Um, individuals with breast implants have a risk of Developing breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Okay. Um, Health Canada recognizes a higher risk of such with implants having a textured surface, especially those with a more highly textured surface as opposed to implants with a smooth surface. Now, this is still a risk, but the implants we would be doing have a smooth surface. Okay. A smooth silicone shell. Yes. Now, implant rupture. As I mentioned, this can happen with saline or silicone. Um, a rupture can occur when the shell of the implant develops a tear or hole. The longer the implants are in place, the higher the chance of rupture. So most people keep their implants in for a few years, up to 10 years usually. And then around the 10 year mark is usually when people want a change, whether that is to downsize rarely to upsize, but sometimes, um, or to take them out, okay? But you'd come in for checkups in between that time, of course, and we'd make sure everything is okay. Okay, seroma. So collection of fluid that occurs in the body after surgical procedure or trauma. It can occur early after surgery or years later. 
it presents a swelling in the breast, bruising, and can be painful, and you may get fever symptoms. So again, as I mentioned, fever, pain, um, the swelling, you just call the clinic and we take a look. Um, number nine, your implants may be covered. Um, now we do offer a manufacturer warranty on our implants, okay? In case anything happens. And then number 10, your implants, unfortunately, do not last forever. So the longer you have your implants, the more likely you will need them removed or replaced. Um, and as mentioned, breasts change with time, um, and so you will need to update your implants eventually to better suit your lifestyle, your aesthetic, and whatnot. But I'll leave this pamphlet with you, okay? You can take it home review anything that you um, have. There are also some notes here, okay, if you want to make any. So I'll leave that with you. Put that there. Now we are going to be using for you the natural, natural silicone implant. So this is just um, a breast augmentation guide from natural talks about the pre-breast augmentation surgery, the surgery, post-breast augmentation care, frequently asked questions, the warranty, okay, etc. This one is great to look through and there are a lot of diagrams, a lot of information. First, we would be doing the low plus to moderate for your implants. And we'd also be doing the slightly firm true form, okay? So it's a slightly firmer gel offering shape control with natural movement and feeling, okay? High performance silicone allows more layers, good scientific stuff, so I'll leave that one with you as well, okay? Do you have any questions as of right now? No, I know a lot of information, but like I said, got time to think about everything. I will have you though, please, just unbutton your blouse and we're going to take a look at your frame. Take some measurements just to confirm the size because I think that is the one we're going to go with. Okay. I'll also just be making a few markings, don't worry. The marker will come off in the shower just a bit of soap and water, but it just helps me get a lay of the land. You can see what I would be doing for your breast augmentation. Okay. Yes, bra is fine, please. are always so tricky to get on, I tell you. The pink color is cute, hey? I love those. Okay. I'm just going to push your hair back here. Okay, and just pull your blouse back a little bit. You okay? Feeling comfortable? Okay, good. If there's anything I can do, just let me know. So you do have a relatively small frame. You also have fairly narrow shoulders. Okay. So we definitely would not want to be doing anything bigger than that implant there. We might even want to go with the smaller one. Okay. We can keep that size then. It 
is common for one breast to be a little bit larger than the other. It's completely normal. So the incisions would be right under the breast. So once it's all done, you really are left with a very, very, very small scar. Um, you can get some scar tissue. That is, you know, something that does happen. But the scar itself is usually, like, not visible at all. I mean, we do a very good job to make sure that the scars are as small as possible. And also because of the placement of the scar, because it's under the breast, you really don't see it. Mm, exactly. Okay, so I'm just going to be making a couple notes. So just based on your frame and everything. of the implant, what we would do. Okay. Okay, just relax. Okay, I'm just gonna have a couple measurements here. Okay. There. Good. Take a little bit. 
and you can see the next size up. It's just because of your smaller frame, I wouldn't recommend going up anymore, but at the end of the day, it is your decision. It just also may pose more risks in terms of discomfort, pain, um, any changes towards your weight um, would also be more prominent with the breast implant. Okay. Well, I can definitely have some order You can always think on it too. You might sleep on it and realize actually that is a good size or maybe I even want something smaller. You're more than welcome to take pictures right now. I can even hold them for you and you can take some pictures and you can um, look back on them later and make a you know, decision. It's always good to think on things, right? Yeah. For sure. I don't mind holding them. So okay, you can just look in the mirror there. Let me make sure that these are in the correct spot. Okay. <laughs> Feel free to take a photo. I don't mind. I'm pretty photogenic. <laughs> just kidding. Good. Okay. Yeah, so you can look back at that and you can also just see based on how they're sitting if you're happy with that. Um, but I mean, I really don't think that going up in size is the best option for you, especially if you're wanting something relatively natural. I mean, these ones are the, like, the, um, the best option considering. Here, let me just take a look at the pamphlet again. The slightly firm, yeah, the slightly firm. And then these ones are the, um, moderate. I think that the full is too much for you. The low plus, we could also do that, but I think that these moderate, slightly firm ones are the best. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else I should let you know. And there are some examples of women here um, with the photos, okay, so you can see there. And you can see their experience and what they had done. Yeah. Really great. These implants, I mean, people just love them. They have really good reviews. There's also, you can see here at the back again, another area to take any notes. Feel free to use this and write down any questions that you have for me that you think of. Okay? But the warranty is also really great as well. Um, so, I mean, as mentioned, these ones are slightly more expensive. It would be around 10000 okay? Um, but you do have healthcare coverage, right? Okay. So, that'd be good for any medications that you need after in terms of healing, pain meds, all of that. So, you don't have to worry there. Um, I would have to run the numbers specifically with the implant that we go with, um, but usually it's anywhere from nine to eleven thousand. Um, but yours would probably be more ninety five hundred. Okay, yeah. exactly. It is a big investment. Um, I think it's a great investment if I do say so myself. You know, this is my line of work, and if you think it's worth that to you then it's definitely, um, you know, a positive investment, you know. Yep, you can get the warranty on the implants. That's usually, um, around, let's see. Okay. Yeah, so if you wanted the silicone lifetime warranty, it is more expensive. It's around 3000 for the lifetime, okay, which is 10 years, okay. As I mentioned, people usually keep their implants for 10 years. The saline ones are a bit cheaper, but I just don't think those are right for you. Oh, really? Your friend has silicone too, yeah. See, I think more people are leaning towards silicone just because it is more natural. 
age as well and you don't have to worry about that yeah okay well I mean feel free to put back on your blouse if you want to take any more pictures with the implants then let me know but I think we have all of the you know basic measurements and whatnot that we would need that I would know which implant would be best for you um, and it's mainly now just you taking the time to do your own research. You can even talk to people who have gotten the implants. I can even, um, what we do here at the clinic is after you've done a procedure and you're really happy with it, um, and you are comfortable talking with other people, we put you on a list and then when someone else comes in and they want to get the procedure done, they have any questions, um, we can have them reach out to you, okay? So, for example, with you, I know a couple of people who've gotten their augmentation done at the clinic, and they said they're more than happy to talk with anyone who's interested in the procedure, so I could give you their information and you can reach out as well, not only for their experience with the procedure itself, but with the clinic and our aftercare. Okay, definitely. Here, I'll just write in your pamphlet. Check, actually. Yeah, okay. Gmail, you can just send an email. anything else that you want to discuss, now is the time. Okay. Good. Well, I'm so happy to hear that you're exciting. It definitely is an exciting experience. I do hope that we get to do this for you. Um, you know, if that is something that you feel is right for you in your journey. I think you're absolutely beautiful. By no means do I think you need the augmentation at all. It's just purely for how you feel and if you'd like it, okay? That is something that I can not make the decision on. That has to be up to you. Oh, I get it. Sometimes we wish people could just tell us what to do, right? Especially for those tough decisions. But take your time. Think on it. There's no rush. But you all need to take... Um, uh, some time off to heal and wear the appropriate bra. Um, you won't want to be doing any like I said, exercises and stuff during recovery, so also make sure that you're going to be scheduling the procedure at a time that's most appropriate for your healing needs. Yeah, some people um, like to get it done in the summer because then they can just lay around, enjoy the sunshine, um, not do anything too crazy. Same thing, some people prefer doing it in the winter because then in the summer they have everything all done and they can wear their bikinis and whatnot. But it's really up to you. It doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure that you can take some time off work, especially if you do a very labor heavy job. Yep. Heavy lifting, stuff like that. Okay, well, I mean, you have the clinic's number, you have my email. Any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to help. Um, and it was so lovely meeting you today. Yes, always great to put a face to a name, like I said. Um, and be sure to take your pamphlets. Okay, I will leave you with these. And if you'd like to book a follow-up consult, um, just call the clinic and our secretary will set that up for you, okay? Of course, we are here to help. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. um, you can email them.
them if you don't hear back um i wouldn't you know press them just because it, it, they are other clients um and they just did it more as like a voluntary thing but hopefully they reach back out okay i can also reach out to them if you feel more comfortable with that of course sure and i can let you know what uh, they say if they're open to Okay, well, be sure to drive safe on your way home. I hope that you had a positive experience today, and I hope to see you soon, okay? Alright, yes. Bathroom just down the hall, and it'll be your third door on the left.